Hey everybody, Joe here. Thanks for watching again. So, a couple videos ago, I tried doing this tree and it was hard. I ended up redoing it a, a, a few times. Well, I've been working on a new technique and I've got this brush. I made it myself by smashing it against the hood of my car and just taping, you know, I smashed it like this and then I just put tape you know from the handle of the brush down to the hood of my car so that it would just dry in the sun like this so I just destroyed a brush and I'm gonna use that to make the look of these these blue spruce type pine needles on my tree so hopefully that works good and I think that that will be a lot easier than trying to, to find some some way of doing it with my square brushes not bad but I'm gonna try again I'm gonna give it another shot while this is still wet, I can wipe it off with this rag. Okay, I'm gonna try a little different approach. That effect is cool. I just would like it if I had more distinguished pine needles, individual needle shapes. But the colors are there. I just have to get the texture to be there now by getting a better brush. Shoot. I'm gonna take this brush and let it dry with paint in it in this smushed position. There, it looks just like pine needles, doesn't it? I'm just gonna let it dry right there. Then that'll squish all the paint into the base of the brush and hopefully it won't get its normal shape back when I get it wet. Okay, now I'm gonna put some, some better details on this water. And I've, I started painting over it with another layer. The, that first layer, you know, the, the whole reason I don't spend a lot of time on it is because I almost always end up painting over it again. Now, Patricia pointed out that it looks dark. And it is dark. It is, in fact, dark. And I have the feeling that when I put some reflection colors in here, that's really going to change the feel of it. And by the way, I appreciate, uh, Patricia, the honest feedback about the feel that you get from that. That's valuable information for, uh, for a creator, is to know the, the, the reaction, the feel that it's giving somebody. I like that. So, what I'm gonna do is try to be more exact on my shapes now that I, now that I established where I want them. I, you know, there's, there's nothing on there right now at the moment, but I remember going through this. Now, I know you can't see what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is popping the lids off of my red and yellow. And I'm thinking that I want to go a little bit, a little bit greenish and a little bit reddish. Sim similar colors that are in there now. But I want to have a good amount of black mixed with it. So, so I'm going to establish my reflection areas. So I need to give myself some freedom on the edges. I can't be worrying about getting exact edges while I'm trying to do the details of little waves in here. So I'll plan on redoing any surrounding edges after I get this more difficult part done. That is the little ripples on this moving current. So I'm going to add a good amount of water to it. See, I just... I've got my water bucket down here and I just dip the brush in water and then skim it over the top. I'm going to mix a brighter color down here where I know I'm going to paint over it in a minute. So I'll take my red and yellow and I want it to be more yellow than red. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and I might use a smaller brush for this, let's see if it works, is make the faces of waves coming down. Now, I'm kind of using an angle on this brush that makes a natural diamond shape by, by using part of one of the corners and going diagonally. It actually creates a kind of a diamond shape by just doing that little stripe there. So I'm going to do a lot of these little shapes if I can. Yeah, that, that long end seems to work better. Now look at this angle. It's tilting way down. I don't, I don't know if I want to have it tilting quite that much. You remember how I said when it's up here, I want it to be more level because it's further away. So what that means if I'm using these diamond shapes, if I make, a, you know, let me explain this better. If I make a bunch of lines that represent my waves crossing diagonally, there's going to be diamonds left in between. 
So those would be the faces of the waves. So if I flatten these diamonds out, that's going to be like more horizontal, more level lines. But if I make the diamonds, you know, uh, tall, then it, th that means the lines are crossing at these steep angles. So my point is, I want these diamonds to have a kind of a flat shape back here. And then I really, since I'm using the diamond shapes, I can just put them anywhere. I don't need to line them up in a perfect grid-like pattern. Just the fact that they have this diamond shape is going to give me the feel I want, even if it's not completely accurate. It might look even better than if I try to be accurate, actually. So with this technique, I want to... I want to get on this quickly enough with my other brush. I don't have another brush. Why am I saying my other brush? Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the paint out of this and just maybe I want to kind of blend it in the direction of the of the waves. I don't know. Eh, straight across seems to work good. I get rid of the paint. I do quick strokes across. Some I'm, I'm going to warn you that if you try this technique, some paint works better than other paint depending on what kind of a what kind of a base it has. Just have to use trial and error. Sometimes I do that and it just ruins it. I think one trick to it is making sure it's nice and thin. This is not on very heavily. This paint isn't isn't applied heavy. Okay, now let's let's uh, brighten up just a couple of these that same stroke I'm not gonna lie this stroke is somewhat of a, a tricky little motor skill getting just the right touch on the wall but those those things you know you you get out what you put in in practice it's not like it's something that's only for the especially gifted it just is a matter of getting used to the brush and, getting the right touch with it. There, I like the way these little little uh, waves look. I think that these horizontal strokes are going to work better for me because I already have the diamond shape creating the feel of diagonal waves crossing. So this stretches them out long way and it's giving me a good what the shadows in between the light colors are going to do is give me an area to put reflections in. Now you might just take a couple of these light spots and just pull them out longer. I think they look better when they're stretched out a little bit. All right, I'm going to move down now and do some lower. So it's back to the black. So I already, this color is already in my black. So I can just mix that together. Added a little water. I'm going to put a little more black and do a little more of my red and yellow. Just, just make a color to match is all I'm doing. Let's do some more black here, some more yellow. It's a little bit tricky getting it to be just the right thickness, you know, and then matching the color at the same time. These things are definitely easier if you just pre-mix the color you want to use. Okay, let's do that, and a tiny bit more red, perhaps. See, if I have more color in my brush than I want to use in my mix, I just put it on the wall away from my mix. Uh, but it's not, you know, it's, this doesn't have to match exactly. It's going to be fine if it doesn't. So we'll go with that color for my shadow, my, my darker reflection area. Then I'm going to do that red and yellow mix down here. Then I'm going to do my diamond shapes. Okay. So same thing here. Let's make some diamonds. Now I'm getting a little bigger because it's getting closer. And that doesn't mean that I can't have tiny ones still. I mean, you can have tiny waves anywhere. I just want to have a, a general pattern visible. So notice my diamond shapes 
are a little little bit taller now too and I want to continue making them taller as I get closer to myself meaning lower in the picture and that'll make the perspective look look a lot better now it might be tricky trying to make these match up because this layer here is trying to dry uh, conveniently it's still probably just barely wet enough to match those with each other all right let's see what happens if I if I blend that so I'm telling you that how heavy this paint is applied really determines how well this technique works you know it I'm realizing that the more I do this that when I apply it heavier it doesn't work as well if I apply it too thin it dries too fast on me see wherever these kind of lose their diamondy spear shape might go over them again so I'm gonna see more of these as it comes closer and you might have connecting together now as it gets closer to my feet so I'll make a couple bigger ones connecting like that we'll still have some little ones in there Let's get that bright yellow and really highlight a couple of these. Now I don't want this to be a source of confusion. This, this is a lighter color, but it represents my underwater color. If you've watched my, if you've watched my uh, How to Paint Waves series, you know I separate the colors into a, into a reflection color that's above water and underwater color. So in this case, my underwater color is lighter than my above water color because all the reflection is dark objects. Well, the sun might be shining right down on this, lighting up the dirt that's under the water. Okay, let's see if we can get a good, good mix here. So I have this area here that's not blended well because it dried and so I have my border I wonder if when next time I mix the dark, let's see if I can just mix some black in there and seems like whenever I add black I also need red. Let's see if I can just add that dark color in there. Let's see here. just. Oh, that's too red. Yeah, I think that'll help. You know, it's no big deal if it doesn't match because I can always Put something else there or I can or I can wait till it dries all the way and just layer what I need this wet on wet is not the only technique to be used it's just that it's now is a convenient time to at least try if I can just get this to blend in right now while it's still a little wet and that'll be my most convenient option but it's not the only option it's always a always a challenge getting getting your uh, overlaps to blend in with each other with fast drying paint you know kind of being a perfectionist about this aren't I let's do a little bit of yellow and red as I get down lower in this picture I might start to go lighter on this shadow color So hopefully that's a little bit lighter than what was up here. We'll see. Maybe I'll just go ahead and add a little bit more of my 
orange. Someone asked on another video if using cadmium orange uh, was the same as mixing the red and the yellow. You know, I tested that. Cadmium orange is, in fact, a more intense orange. So if you need a bright orange, it's always best to just get a primary primary color in a tube rather than rather than the mix but I rarely need a, such a bright orange you know, so when I need anything that's orange I just mix red and red and yellow most of the time it's uh, really helpful to to get used to putting an even thickness of paint on that's you know that's that's a helpful skill to develop is is to get the paint distributed without making it so thin that it dries super fast. Look for the heavier spots, look for the thinner spots. Try to get it evenly distributed according to the technique that you want to use. I mean, that's what I do. I am putting this on and trying not to put it on too thin and trying not to have heavy spots and thin spots. A consistent layer. Now watch how I'll take this color and I'm going to try to just blend it up into these these bright areas that are already the same color. Let's put a little highlight on that while we're at it. This is actually still a little wet so let's get some water. You see this? I'll just blend that and I'll just blend that right into there because that was getting dry. The next thing I'm going to do is pull out the small brush and start putting the reflection colors on this water. So I'm going to put my highest reflection color, the lowest, on my water. So imagine what's in my picture. Let's just say, even though I can't see it up there, let's say that at some point over my head, as I'm standing under these trees, there's a little bit of blue sky showing through. So that is the highest and being the highest well the reflection think of this as a whole pretend that it's just smooth and there's no ripples on it for a moment as a whole body it flips the reflection upside down right so whatever's highest will be the lowest so I'm not gonna put my blue sky colors up in here if I'm reversing my image okay so you can see the darkness of that that's going to be significantly darker. Let's test it against my, my rock here. Real similar. So that'll be a good rock reflection color. Tiny bit greener than the rock, which is good because my water is a tiny bit greener than the rock. I've got my brush now and I found that uh, the trick with getting the brush to stay like this is not washing it out. <laughs> so it's just crusty with paint and it's just all the bristles are just straight out just straight out to the side so this will be fun it's uh, definitely something that I have yet to use in a mural okay I'm gonna redo this again but I just realized how I want to do this I think I've got it this time you feel like kind of groggy from sleeping huh yeah let's redo this tree real quick this is gonna be easier than wiping the paint off let's take this get a little bit of red in here <laughs> How many times am I going to redo this tree? It's funny. And that, that color I'll use for that rock in there too. Paint? Yep, that's exactly what that is. That's paint. That's paint? Yep, that's paint. Yep. Daddy's painting. That's white paint. Let's put some some rocks in here. Another redo. Trying to blend these colors in. See this is why this is why it would have been uh, dumb to do a whole bunch of detail on this big big aspen tree here. Can you imagine me redoing 
all the little ripples and black in there. The little black ridges and paint. Yeah. That's right. How did you know this is called paint anyway? Paint. Who, who taught you that? Paint. That's right. You said that perfectly. Turtle. The turtle? Yeah. Zoe, Zoe has a pet turtle. He's saying turtle. Okay, that's good enough on the tree. I'm just going to end up redoing it again. <laughs> Let's put some bright white up in there. No harm in making it look good. Bless you. You sneezed. That's called a sneeze. Me? Mm hmm. Did you have a good nap? Yep. Mm hmm. You went night night, huh? All right, then back in here, I just kind of had some rock colors. But, uh, See, I'm just a, I'm just a skinny guy, but this baby keeps me in shape. I got mom arms. Okay. No, it's, you know, most of the time I'm making these videos, my wife Christy is, is, uh, taking care of Zaders here, but she's out at the moment. And I'm really wanting to paint this. I just couldn't wait. Paint. Paint? Yep, that's what it is. It's paint. This rock and tree come out better looking each time I redo them. <laughs> it's working out to my advantage. Let's put a little bit of red Wait, and yellow look. in there. Red, yellow, black. Make the shadows on this rock. Tiny bit more yellow. A little bit of water. Paint's getting kind of tacky. Yellow. Yellow. That color is called yellow. See this? This is yellow, see? Yellow. Don't touch it. All right, we'll let this dry for a little bit. And then I'll come back and do try number, what is it, five? <laughs> These fine needles. But I'm gonna use a I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do wet on dry, just like I did in my other pine needles things. I don't know how that would work for a really tiny pine tree, but maybe it would work with just a tiny brush. I don't know. But for this big one, I can do that. That technique. Just flare the bristles of the brush out. Zeta, that, that makes it hard to paint when you do that. See, that's the thing about when you grab my arm. Paint? Uh-huh. Now you're tying up both of my <laughs> Boy, you're getting heavy. Almost done, almost done. All right. I don't know why I'm spending so much time. I'm just gonna put a pine tree over that. All right, that's good. You try things and they don't always work. That is just a fact of life. So no big deal. My, my cool brush modification was not successful. Maybe another time it will be. But for now, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, do this by a different method here. I think I'm just gonna put this right on, right on this picture again, just like this. Put these colors on. 
So I've got black, blue, and yellow. Those are the colors I used. I wanna have this be pretty thick right around in here. So this is where I'll mix my color because I know I'm gonna use a lot right there. Put yellow on there, put black. Nice dark shadows. That's how you get things to look real three dimensional. Put the dark shadows on there. Okay, so now once again, I've got a branch coming down like this. So I'm just gonna put some water in my brush and I'm just gonna do this without doing anything else. So this might be a few pine needle clumps right there, but then before I come back and put needles going other directions, I'm, I'm just gonna let that dry. Here, let's get this. You know, that other brush might actually be good. Might actually be handy to get the pine needles. Let's try it. Yeah, that actually works better to get all these little needles, so I'll, I'll use that. Hey, it wasn't a, wasn't a complete fail after all. It actually is good for getting little, little needle shapes in here. Now the difference between what I was doing and, and this is I was trying to get it all in one shot. This one, I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna Do some more here. I'm gonna do it in layers. All right, so we might have needles here, coming down here, here. There's a little branch coming off the main branch. Let's do another one here. See, now I'll take my little brush. Well, that's still. Still wet. And I have to resist the urge to make it look nice and round and perfect, trying to perfect it. You know, I, when I get the look of some needles coming down, I don't want to hit it going crossway before it has time to dry. Okay, let's do it right here. So I'm just pulling the paint that I just applied. Just pulling it down off that edge to get that. Well, for right now, I'm just gonna get this in place with the shadow color because I feel like I need to research this a little bit more to come up with a way to do those little needle highlights. And I don't think that that's working as good as I want it. Well, I'm feeling pretty beat by today. Man, I, I have tried multiple times on both of my pine trees in this picture, not having the success that I'm looking for, but this is the way it goes. And I've just gotta keep trying to reinvent the way I, I get those little, little pine needles. But man, I'm feeling defeated by it today. But I at least got the, the dark shadows in place. And you know, I am look, liking the way that's looking. And the water's looking good. So, you know, I don't mean to sound like I'm, like I'm unhappy with the way my work's turning out. It's, I, I'm, I'm happy about it, but man, those pine trees drive me crazy. So let's look at some comments. Uh, Samoera59 says, I'm following you from a small village close to Vienna, Austria, Europe. And I can tell you, man, you're an inspiration. Well, thank you very much. That's, that's really encouraging for me to hear that. See, sorry, Tiger Wolf says, <laughs> how do you keep your edges clear? I mean, the corners at the carpet and around power sockets and stuff, just really careful painting or masking them off or something else. Well, on, on this one, I mean, you look at this edge here, that's as messy as it gets. But when I do want to keep them clean uh, and cut in a nice edge, I just use a good cut brush. You know, just, just I, I was paint contracting for a long time and, and uh, 
just the same way a contractor uses a brush with a nice clean edge to cut in a corner but I just do that with each color as I'm painting the mural I mean yeah yeah it can be challenging I do use tape no shame in using tape uh, if you do use tape in a corner or on a on a floor do a couple coats do the first coat lightly when you use tape and and don't put all the paint on because it, it squishes under the tape I actually had a video from way back when on on how to cut in how to how to how to brush and roll a wall I think it was so if you want to look up that title you can probably find it where I show how to bend the brush you can actually push the brush against the wall and the bristles will they'll stick down behind the carpet and you can just kind of wiggle the brush around to get that paint down actually behind the carpet without painting the carpet but yeah, I do it all different ways, depending. If I really want to get detail all the way against a corner, I will tape it. And uh, and then if I cut it in, yeah, it's just being careful. Sheen Garugamesh says, Finally, I'm the first to comment on a video. I feel like I reached a lifelong goal. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> well, thank you, Sheen, for that enthusiastic comment. I really like that. Abner Box says, Tus murales son increíbles. Inc increíble. No, I said that wrong. Increíbles. Your murals are incredible. Thank you very much, Abner. I appreciate that. That's a very nice compliment. Art Crafty says, no time lapse, please. I understand what you're saying. These are all being archived in real time for later use and uh, I'm, I'm putting them up on another channel and as soon as I get that loaded up then I'm gonna let you know. Now here's here's an interesting James Knapp says I find it incredible that although you haven't painted detail the effects of what you have painted look very detailed. It's true that there's not a lot of detail if you look at it closely but this is the value of trying to use the color in just such a way understanding that if you if you really try to dial in the colors to communicate the the message you're trying to get you know like this tree branch is coming forward this leaf has sunlight on that side so i make it yellower all these all these things i'm trying to explain then the color causes your imagination to turn brush strokes into details because the color is there so it feels like you're really looking at something because it feels like you're really looking at something. You imagine details that probably aren't even intentionally painted. I mean, that's my theory. Uh, but I really think that just, just fine-tuning colors in, um, with, with understanding, you know, really is key to that, that exact thing, that effect. Thank you very much for the nice compliment. Rejuric Ladbrok says... Hi Miral Joe, thanks for the great videos. I don't understand one thing though. You say subtractive color theory is used with the transparency of objects, whereas for reflections, the additive color theory is used because, okay, so I'm cutting in and see, there's a, in past videos I've explained how, how with reflections it's this light plus this light uh, and it's the combination of the two so that you understand what this is talking about. Uh, but how can that be considering that you mix reflections using paints uh, which are subtractive? It's subtractive mixing. So I, I, I'm going to stop reading the, the comment right there. This, this is kind of a complex question and I want to do a good job of answering it. It's a good question. Okay, so here's an important thing to understand. My color theory is, is not either subtractive or additive. But those terms, it's important to understand those terms those refer to methods of mixing so subtractive mixing is not a kind of color theory it's a kind of mixing it's it's just like it's a method right so then additive color mixing is what what a computer screen uses when it shines two lights at the same time without it can't overlap two lights to cancel each other out that's additive well, so really, I think there should be a third kind of mixing that is specified, which is, which is what paint does. And that kind of mixing is, is a combination of subtractive because particles of pigment are overlapping and canceling each other's color. 
but they're also sitting side by side. So if I were to take sand or something that had larger particles that, that weren't transparent, where they weren't going to cancel each other's colors because you don't see through them, you just see what's on the surface when you mix them together. Okay, that would be averaging. Okay, so I could do an example of averaging by taking this, taking this lid right here, right? Okay, this has all these colors on it. And if I just spin it, this is not additive. That, let's see if we can do that in slow, mo, slow motion. <laughs> so when I do that, I don't know if that was a successful demonstration, but, but when, I, when I do that, it's not going to be the sum of all of those. It's going to be the average of all of those colors because you're seeing all of them part of the time, right? So that's how it is with paint. It, it's not like on your computer screen where uh, 255 green plus 255 red equals 510 yellow. So understanding that, when I make a reflection on something, you have to understand that it can be as a reflection is becoming greater, so the reflection of the yellow sun on the blue water, as the yellow is becoming brighter, the, the color of the water from underneath is becoming darker. So they don't continue to both show at full power. So reflections are often an average of the two uh, values of light that's being used. So I can oftentimes take my paint and mix it in order to achieve this similar look. Now, the, the example you said in this comment, pink berry plus green leaves with the brownish reflection, usually to get that brownish reflection, I will take a yellow and darken it with maybe black and red in order to, to get that reflection color. Because, yeah, because red and green light make yellow and then I darken it down to be of similar value as the red and the green. Well, sometimes you can, can, you can use the paint in that way, sometimes you can't. It just depends on what colors they are. The important thing is that the color theory is the understanding of what light does when it mixes and then how to achieve that using subtractive mixing or average mixing. <laughs> I don't know what to call that. With your paint. So, difference between color theory. These are not different kinds of color theories. Great question. I'm glad I got to uh, talk for a really long time about that. Hopefully next week I'll be I'll be really nailing it on these pine needles that I was trying so hard on today. But I appreciate you tuning in again. It's always fun. So I'll look forward to seeing you next week.